Hello everyone and welcome to Cretaceous Cantina. Today we're having a look at the Mattel Jurassic World Quest for Indominus Rex pack. I picked this up from Walmart.com for $39.99 this past Wednesday. Today it is Friday and it is here. Uh, hours after it was published on Walmart.com, the listing was removed and uh, it wasn't available there anymore, but it's actually still available in the app. I just checked it a little while ago, and if you have the app from Walmart, uh, it's still there, so you can still get it. Uh, it's a little tricky to find because they misspelled Indominus on the listing, but trust me, it's there. Um, so there's a lot of speculation regarding this set, a lot of hypotheticals. We just don't know a whole lot about it. Uh, I think it actually came from Mattel during Comic-Con uh, that said it was supposed to be available in limited quantities. And uh, as we know, it was originally going to be a Toys R Us exclusive. At least that's what I've heard. Sadly, as we all know, Toys R Us is no longer in business here in the U.S. Uh, so Walmart is taking ownership of this particular exclusive. And uh, they delivered. I can't believe it's $39.99. I mean, that's just insane for what you get in this set. Uh, let's go ahead and start off with the box. It's a very large box. And it's got some beautiful artwork, definitely some of the nicest artwork in the entire Mattel Jurassic World line. I just love seeing the Mosasaurus go for the submarine. And it's quite creative how they actually put the submarine in there. You can actually see it uh, there in the box, kind of peeking out just a little bit where that circle is. Very interesting. Um, and uh, I love the Indominus Rex skeleton, though it doesn't really look like an Indominus. It actually looks more like a T-Rex. Uh, in that particular render but nonetheless very nice box i love how on the lower right it shows you exactly what you're getting you can see that it also includes a mercenary it's the same mercenary that we got before so nothing too special there here's the back of the box it gives you a better look at the contents the indominus skeleton looks a little more like an indominus and it talks a little bit about all the action features looks like the sub maintains all the features that it originally had it says that it floats and uh, there's a look at the bottom left of other items it looks like most of that stuff might actually be the uh, the smaller scale and die cast vehicles which is interesting i know i'm going to get questions about the upc so there it is right there as you guys can see i do have a nice gash in the bottom of my box uh, so when Walmart shipped it, uh, they cut right through the shipper box, and that was the result. Uh, and interestingly, one of my sets came with the shipper box, and the other one did not. And just to give you a peek at the inside of the box, once you cut the tape, it's actually a flip-up box, which is kind of nice. And you can see that everything is pretty well secured in there. There's no plastic around either the submarine or the skeleton of the Indominus. Um, but she seems to be pretty secured in there. Same with the Mosasaur. That is actually wrapped in plastic, which is especially important, I think, since she does have that real feel skin. All right, you guys, so here are the items completely unboxed. Rather than focus on detailed reviews for the Mosasaur and the submarine, which I have been working on separately for some time now, I'm gonna focus more on comparing them to the previous versions of these items. That way you can see if there are any noticeable differences. There might be an incentive for you to either purchase or not purchase this set, or even purchase this set over the previous versions of those items. We will, of course, go in depth on the Indominus Rex skeleton. All right, to start things off, let's compare the Mosasaurus. Um, looking at them one next to the other, I don't see any huge difference between the two. Even the shade of blue looks to be the same on the two figures. Now I brought the one from the background a little bit closer. That's actually the original release. The one here that's sitting a little closer to the surface is the Quest for Indominus release. Uh, again, really nothing that's standing out to me as being all that different. The fins and the tails look to be the same as well. Uh, if you're seeing any difference, it's probably because of the angles and the lighting, but uh, in person, they definitely look to be practically the same. If anything, perhaps there is a little bit more of a sheen on the Quest for Indominus release compared to the previous version. But if so, it is very slight and really depends on the angle and the lighting because you're not seeing it quite as much when I move it to the back. Now I will say that there is a difference with the bellies. Uh, again, I know that on camera, the one on the bottom looks a little bit darker. In person, that's not the case. It's just lighting and angles and all that. Um, but the difference that I'm seeing is that you have a more matte look on the Quest for Indominus Mosasaur's belly, whereas on the original release, it's more of a glossy look. It also feels a little more tacky, um, whereas the, the new one feels a little more smooth, which I think is an improvement. You also see that the QC on mine, on the original, actually wasn't that great. There's some little... Uh, paint rubs and it seems like little areas where the paint's fallen off. So I'm glad to see that the new one for the quest for Indominus set does not have that problem. The last thing I want to point out about the Mosasaurs is that the jaw seems to be a better construction on the quest for Indominus version here on the right. With my old one right here, the single packed one, you can see it just kind of has a slack jaw to get it to open. 
uh, it kind of clicks in place, which is fine. But then to close it, it doesn't close all the way. Whereas with the new one, it sits a little bit closer to the top jaw. And to open it, it also uh, kind of locks open. But it seems like it closes a lot more easily. All right, so here on the left, we have the original submarine that comes single packed. And on the right, we have the Quest for Indominus submarine, uh, which you can see I left the figure in there. On first glance, they look pretty much the same. Like the Mosasaurus, there isn't really anything that stands out as being all that different. The shade of yellow, in fact, uh, looks pretty much the same. I was trying to see if maybe one of them looked slightly darker. Maybe the Quest for Indominus one looked a little bit darker, but I can't say that definitively. I mean, they're very, very close. Um, if there is any difference, it's got to be so minor that uh, it's almost not there. Um, I mean, they really look almost identical in all respects. All the other components, like the, the gray hatches up here and the little floaties, uh, all of those look to be the same. I mean, again, same coloration. There's not any varying levels of gloss one to the other. They look pretty much the same, um, which is good because if you didn't want to pick up um, one or the other, then um, I mean, there's even less incentive to pick up this set uh, or to get the single packed submarine if you were kind of thinking of going back and getting that. Maybe you have the Quest for Indominus set. Um, so yeah, I mean, that is pretty good to see. And as far as those LED lights go, seems to be the same thing. Yeah, they work exactly the same way. And even those um, tools that you have, you have like the buzz saw right here, or whatever you want to call that, and then the little uh, grippy claw, those seem to be the same as well. I mean, they function the same. Uh, articulation is the same for these robotic arms. Same thing on the inside as well. As far as the mercenary action figure goes, uh, again, same thing, nothing different one to the other. Uh, it's the exact same figure, exact same articulation. Uh, I will say that I do feel like the joints are a little bit more loose on the one that comes packed in the Quest for Indominus set. And the figure, of course, sits in there very nicely, very securely. You can grab onto the controls on the sides. I do think this would have been a great opportunity for a new figure to have been included in this set, uh, maybe one that's a little more specific to Fallen Kingdom. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, even if it's a repack, I think it's better than nothing at all. All right, now arguably the star of the set is the Indominus Rex skeleton. Now, this is actually quite a bit bigger than I anticipated. From top to bottom, she stands at seven inches at the hip, and from front to back, she is 21 inches long. So very sizable accessory. What's also quite great is that it seems pretty anatomically correct um, to an Indominus Rex. Like The head looks to be pretty good size in proportion to the rib cage and the tail, and she does have a very long tail just as the Indominus did. What I like especially about this is how realistic the bones look. I mean, it's obviously a plastic toy, but uh, they did a nice job at least making it look pretty realistic to actual bone. And you see that here with uh, the way that it was painted, the way that it was cast maybe, and a very slight fleck that's kind of showing through very, very slight, not as much as we see on some of these other uh, Jurassic World dinosaurs. Uh, but it's really well done. And you do have some articulation here. And uh, for the head, you can see that the jaw opens quite a bit. Um, obviously, there's no muscle to control that, so you can open it as far as you want. And it closes. It looks nice either which way, however you want to have it. The teeth don't look quite accurate to Indominus Rex. They look more like a T-Rex. Uh, obviously, Indominus had really gnarly looking teeth. You're not really getting that here. There is a ball hinge at the uh, back of the head where it connects to the neck. So you can make it look up or look down. You can rotate it like so and it works pretty well. What's interesting about these joints is there's like a little, uh, you can see a little notch that kind of sticks out. I don't know if that's meant to limit the movement because if you see when I move it back, it kind of catches right there. It doesn't allow me to move it. Well, it kind of goes under right there, but I do notice on some of these joints that it doesn't work quite the same way. Here's another one right here. And uh, it seems like it is kind of limiting it there. I can't get any higher than that. Uh, it goes down, you can rotate it side to side. 
Um, for the arms, you do have joints only at the shoulders. These are very stiff. I might need to take the hair dryer and kind of heat those up, but I can't get those to rotate at all, even though they clearly do have uh, hinges right there. You do have that notch there. Uh, I can't even get that to bend. Um, out of fear of breaking it, I'm not going to move it too much. Uh, I think I just need to take the hair dryer to it and loosen those up. And then perhaps the joints will be a little more flexible. Here at the back, you have another joint right there, and you can also rotate it. Uh, it clicks as it goes up or down, so it is ratcheted. And uh, here at the um, hips, you also have the same style of joints there. And you can move them out uh, forward, and they are ratcheted as well, as you can tell. And then here at the knees, there's that little notch right there to kind of limit how far it goes. Uh, I don't know if that's meant to uh, prevent it from breaking or what, but that is interesting. And then you also get that at the ankles as well. So you can rotate the ankle and you can bend it up or down like that. So nice movement there. And then finally at the tail, uh, you have another joint right there. So you can rotate it and move it up or move it down. For the most part, it just kind of falls down unless you kind of stick it up like that. It seems like it stays in that spot right there. And uh, that is all as far as the articulation goes. So for a dead animal or a skeleton, that's actually pretty good for the most part. Size comparison with the mercenary. Um, as you can see, he looks to be in pretty good scale with the Indominus. Um, if anything, maybe she's a little bit underscaled to how she would have been in the film, but it's pretty close. The skeleton's obviously quite a bit bigger, as she should be, of course. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so there you have it. This is the Mattel Jurassic World Quest for Indominus Rex pack. Overall, you guys, this is one heck of a set. It is easily the best value in the entire Mattel Jurassic World toy line. For $40, what you get is absolutely unreal. When you consider that the Mosasaur by herself costs $30, the submarine costs $25, and the action figure costs $8, uh, with a couple of accessories, of course, you really can't beat what you are getting for the money here, especially when you factor in the fact that you get the Indominus Rex skeleton. If for some odd reason you've been holding off on buying this awesome Mosasaurus or even this really fun submarine, then I think this is your best bet. Again, one heck of a value. It's a great deal for $40. Uh, this is a fantastic set for either yourself, for your own collection, or if you want to have doubles to take out of the box, or if you want to gift one to a relative or friend, uh, you really cannot go wrong here. This is an awesome deal. I couldn't be happier with it for the price. The only problem I have with it is that the Indominus skeleton can be a little bit difficult to work with, uh, a little bit hard to stand. Uh, and a little bit hard to get some of those joints, like the shoulders primarily, to move. But I mean, it is a skeleton, so in that sense, uh, really not a big deal. You're probably just going to have it laying around on your shelf anyway. But I can't recommend this to you enough. I mean, this is easily the best Jurassic World set from Mattel for the price and one that's very tempting to buy multiples of just because of how incredible the value is and how incredible the box art is. Absolutely love it. All right, my friends, I hope that you've enjoyed this video. Let me know your thoughts down below. We will be picking this up. Did you order it from walmart.com? As always, I'd like to thank you for tuning in to Cretaceous Cantina. Until next time, bye-bye.